I'm Lynn. And I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. And welcome to our sequence today. We're going to be working on a program for fighting infections. And we're going to do lots of rinsing out of those muscles. So we are in the middle of a cold snap in the UK. Um, I don't know where you are, but uh, there's a lot of people coming into classes at the moment with coughs, colds and tummy bugs as well. I'm finding students yeah. coming in with. Yeah, and of course you can do things as well off of the mat to help you. Using ginger is a fantastic thing, most of you have probably heard of that, but ginger in water is a great drink. Ginger, water, turmeric as well to put into your food. These are all natural foods you can use, simple and cheap. Yeah, so turmeric is a really interesting one. It's anti-inflammatory, as many of you will know. Um, you can now get it in root form. We used yeah. not to be able to, to buy that. You used to have to buy just dried ground turmeric, and you can now buy it in root form, either on the internet or at your local farmer's market, possibly, or a local market might sell it, or a health food store. Yeah, it's quite widely available. Mm. Um, mm. You do find shops that sell it. The one thing I will say is that um, if you are into your turmeric, which I am immensely, um, it stains. <laughs> it stains <laughs> yeah. your hands. So you end up with yellow fingers. So just be, be careful with that. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's a small price to pay for good health. <laughs> yeah. it, is, it certainly is. Okay, so back with the task of working your body today. So hopefully you're on your mat. So stand in Tadasana, take the weight back. So just ground yourself for a moment or two, scanning the body from the very base of the pose. So take the weight right back into the heels until you feel those legs going up. This is really important, these legs coming up. And there's a little bite in the lower abdomen which will encourage this lift all the way through the centre of the body and open the chest because of course we need to encourage the breath to be um, flowing through the body in a natural way, but also a good framework for your breath is important. So we're going to reach the arms out to the sides to start with. Now, this is very key, this action. Not only do your arms extend to open these paraspinal muscles at the back here, but also we can turn our arms to change the alignment of the soft tissue fiber. So. You're going to turn your arms, upper arms, in this way, but you have to turn them right from the base, right from the root of the arms. It's very, very strong. And keep rinsing. What we would say is rinse out those upper arm muscles so it becomes a very challenging action. The thumb moves down. And from that action, and from that alignment, from this rotation, we're going to take the arms up very slowly, very slowly, very slowly. You can see here, with resistance, with resistance, extending those arms up so much. Extending through the centre of the body, but you can see what a challenging action this is. So, let me just show you, if I just worked and took the arms up, this is an easy action to do. If you want to rotate, it's quite strong, isn't it? It, it really is. is. <laughs> it brings in that internal fire. You need to get that internal fire to burn those impurities and to keep that infection away. And releasing the arms down. So hopefully you were rinsing out those upper arms with us just now. And um, we're going to do it again. But this time we're going to come for Utkatasana. So slightly different pose now, but with that action. So extend the arms out. Extend the arms out right into the fingertips. So again, we're rotating those arms. Rotate right from the root. So it's a really challenging action. And extend through the arms. So if you do find that you have hypermobile elbows, you can see here Leo's got um, these hypermobile elbows, which are slightly out of shape. And um, it's a very challenging action when you have the elbow that actually really takes over in every movement. So you've got to see that you get this rotation, or rotation, or rotation. So you're rinsing the body and then extend the arms up. 
Oh, that is really strong work. So now you're going to just soften the knees, soften the knees. Now, you've got to imagine you're creating that chair shape, so the arms are going to take you up, take the abdomen back and go back with the thighs, come into the seated position, come slightly forward with the dorsal spine, keep the chest lifted, it's yoga, smile, be happy, breathe, breathe. <laughs> it's a tough action. Okay, take a breath in and release in and coming up. Okay, so I hope you're still with us practicing Bhutkatasana. So we're going to practice again these arms once more. So we're really getting the mobility in, in the joints but also rinsing out with those muscles. So this time when we come into the pose, we're coming for Uttakatasana, then we're going to come for Uttanasana. Now those of you who have got stiff hamstrings, this is no problem. In yoga, you just take your hands onto a cup of yoga bricks. Okay, we haven't got any to demonstrate here, but you'll see in some of the videos that we use the props and the yoga bricks or a few books will be fine. All right, so extending the arms out to the side again. So it's a really long extension. Rotate at the shoulder itself, rotate, and keep the rotation happening. So this has got a rinse, rinse, rinse. The thumbs have got to face down. You've got to go up from that alignment. So you've got to go up, picking up the inner arms. The inner arms have got to pick up. Going up, 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 up in this direction. This is strong, strong action. And then soften the knees. Utkatasana. Yeah, Utkatasana. So come forward, so you've got to extend up through the side waist. All of this armpit chest has got to come forward, the arms up. Now, you're going to pick up the back creases, the buttock creases, up as you go down into Uttanasana. So it's a fluid action as you go down, the buttock creases come up and you take those hands down to the floor or to your bricks. So be in this position, take your hands either to the bricks or to the floor and see that you resist that connection. So taking your fingers to the floor, lifting up through the abdomen, through the legs, all of this needs to be practiced. See that you get all of that length. And then see if you can flatten your hands either on the bricks or onto the floor and take the hands back nearer towards your feet because Uttanasana is an extreme action but it is this fold. So if it's difficult at this moment in time, don't worry, it will come with consistency. Just keep practicing. Okay, coming up out of the pose and standing up. So we're going to come for Trikonasana, and the reason why we're coming for this pose is that we rinse the leg out in a slightly different way, so we're opening the gateways of the body. So jump the legs apart from your trikonasana. Remember in the arm action, so I'm going to get you to do this, I know, just once more. So get that rotation and turn the palms, turn the palms, turn the arms, everything turning, everything turning. And then you keep that rotation, but you only turn the palm down. So you get that action. Now turn the back foot in and the front leg out. So left foot in, right leg out and straighten. Now I'm just going to show you here on Leo that this wrapping action, come down to this level, there is a tendency to roll this way and we want to open this gateway. It's a very important gateway. So we're going to soften the legs slightly and see that you get a little bit more rotation. And as you get that rotation, the muscle fibers have got to rinse, have got to rinse this way from the inside to out. So there's a lot of emphasis there and lift up through the center of the body and then come into your trikonasana action. Pull up through the center of the body and come into trikonasana. But keeping this rinsing action, the extension through the spine, front body to back body, on extending. Now from that action, from that rotation, you've got to see that the outer hip goes in and the whole of this sideways comes forward. It's got to come towards the inside of the thigh, you've got to get that rotation. Okay, take a breath in and come up. It's a very strong practice. 
Alright, so turning your left foot in, your right foot out, that's wrong. Right foot in, left foot out, and straighten the leg. And again, bend this front leg and see if you can encourage the groin to become soft. This rotation happening. Rotating. And then see, can you straighten the leg? And then come into a trikonasana action. So it's really important to rinse those thighs thigh bones, oh my god, forget that bit, it's really important to rinse the thigh muscles so that you can get that connection with the thigh and the opening of the gateway, the inner groins is a very key action, extending the arm up and again remember from that front leg you're going to move that front outer hip in but also all of this waist has got to come round, it's got to come round, it's got to come round. And then taking a breath in and coming up, turning the feet face forward, and then bringing the legs together. And standing toes. And just recover for a few moments. So rolling your shoulders back and down, round into your legs, and lift out of the pelvis. So this lift out of the pelvis, this extension through the front body is really important. So you can get this in Tadasana, you can get this from Hastasana, extending the arms up and of course when we start our back bend series shortly then we'll be getting lots of extension through the front body. Okay we're coming down to floor level now and we're going to use the bolsters to start with. Okay so we come for a Barabhajasana twisting action. Um, now, what's very important here is that we twist from the whole of the spine to the very base of the spine. And to do that, you need to see that you're sitting back into your pelvis. You soften your belly and you sit back into your pelvis. All of that action. And then when you come to twist, you are twisting from the very far corner of the lower back region. So start to come into the twist and you feel as if it's very difficult to go anywhere with this action. But you've got to see that you ground down even more. So this action, so let me just show here. So there's all different ways of approaching this pose, but we've got to come back to here. Now you've got to turn. Yes, it makes it so hard. So you've got to ground it so that you've got to use your back muscles to get that turn. It's very different, isn't it? Oh, no, you don't. So you've got to work internally. You've got to move that abdomen towards the spine. It's a little bit difficult, a little bit more challenging to come into this action. I'm going to let you know, move a little bit forward now. But at the beginning, of course, there's all different ways of approaching, but we want to ground down at the base. It's really important that we so this pose, when you practice with that grounded action in the pelvis, it holds everything back so that it grounds and anchors the base of the pose. And the reason why you would work in this way is so that you get the twist all the way along the spine. So quite often we only move a little bit of the spine, but with that anchoring it changes everything. So this is a really good pose to practice in preparation or with your twisting actions. So it can be used as a, a restorative, restful pose, perhaps not so intense. And then we're going to come up and do the other side. So just keeping that grounded action. So that's what we want to do is to lift. That's got to stay there. And now you've got to find some length. So the length all got to come here, this way. This is going to stay down. Yeah. So we can all just go in one direction, but when we come down here, this is really quite a challenging action. You feel the difference. You can't move. 
Okay, so we'll give you a little leverage there so you can move a little bit. So you just get that rinse in action. So these are important poses to get into those places that we don't usually get into. So just letting the body completely rest down. So let the spine become weighted as you come into the twist. So it's passive but very active at the same time. So although it's, you're on a nice bolster and a nice support, the action of the spine is fairly strong and intense. And then again to come out of this pose. So just stay in this pose if you want to stay in it for a little bit longer, that's fine. And then you can start the video again. Okay, so we're coming for Bharavajasana twist. So we're going to sit on the bolster, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Don't be surprised if these um, twists make you feel a little strange. <laughs> They can make you feel a little nauseous. Yeah, they can do. Because um, these are quite, it, we're teaching them in a fairly intense way. So starting in Dandasana, lifting up, lifting through the centre of the body. Soften your knees and then take the legs to your left side. Now you can see the foot position. Most of you will be familiar with Bharatyasana. But the top foot goes over the instep of the bottom foot. And when you come into this action, lifting up, you'll be able to see how important it is understanding the twist of the spine. So you have to imagine that your spine is the meridian line now, going all the way through the base of the body, all the way to the crown of the head. Then taking the left hand towards the outer right thigh, and the back hand back, so the right hand back. Now, the action that we're trying to get here is to twist, yes, for sure, but you twist until you come to that pause and you need to rinse, but not keep turning. So not to keep turning, but to see how much you can lift up through the center of the spine. And then the whole of the right side of the spine needs to deepen its action. So you move in so strongly with this right side of the spine and then you lengthen and broaden the left side. So you can feel the difference with the pose. So it's quite a strong action. It's one of my favorite twists. I really enjoy practicing this pose because it touches your spine in such a special way. So we're not coming into the full pose, but we're just showing a way of how to be very attentive to the spine and the rinse in action that is required. And releasing. Do you feel rinsed? I do. <laughs> and lifting up, and then taking the legs to the right side. So the legs go to the right. So if you do have a problem with knees or it's difficult to sit, don't think that this is not for you. Yoga is too difficult. Always sit a little bit higher. We can always modify poses. Yoga is for everybody. Take in your right hand to the outer side of your left thigh and your left hand behind. And again, what we want to do is just turn. If you know that action, you see this. Uh -uh. We have to see that we lift up through the center of the spine. Remember what I was saying? Then the length of the spine helps you to extend and turn a little bit more. So you have to see that you move in with that left side of the spine. And the right side of the spine now comes to broaden. Broaden. So you have to move more in. So the shoulder blade strongly in, move in, the spine deeply. Try and find every single attachment to the spine as you start twisting and turning. 
you see that the twist comes a little easier, turn, turn is strong, strong. So we haven't said much about the base of the pose, but the clue is in the preparation of that twist on the bolster. See that you're still grounding down in the base of the pose. The pelvic girdle has got to catch that soft tissue fiber. So it has to line that bone to keep you grounded and down. So see that the right buttock is not lifting and you're grounding down so strongly. And then release them. Okay, good. stretch in the legs. So these are a few poses that are practiced with symmetry and alignment which will help to rinse those muscles. We're going to come into a Shavasana action now with the bolster underneath the thighs. So taking the bolster underneath the thighs and then coming for the Shavasana. So this is just as important as the rinsing actions. Because this, in our sequencing, becomes our meditation and our relaxation. So do feel free to practice some of these poses several times in the video and then come for your shavasana. This is when we let go and relax and release. Just that releasing helps to maintain a softness in the body and to release the tension. It's such a key practice. And soften and release around the facial features, release around the mouth, throat, shoulders, become weighted towards the floor. Remembering to rotate the arms this time to the floor so that the palms face up towards the ceiling. So let the fingers slowly, slowly coil towards the floor. Softening your abdomen and just become aware of your breath. Inhalation and exhalation. Let the breath be smooth and even on each breath. Let the body become weighted. Let the body move deeper towards the earth. Come into complete relaxation. Any afflictions that may come into the mind, just dissolving, just let them go. So I'm going to leave you in this Shavasana action and leave Leo to relax in her Shavasana. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like our videos, click the like button or even subscribe to our channel. Namaste.